Welcome to Still Growing in Grace. I'm Mike Zanker. Join me and other amazing guests as we explore and discover better, hope-filled perspectives on biblical texts and difficult themes. Prepare to expand your understanding of God's love and amazing grace. Growing in Grace Ministries Canada and Hope Fellowship, as well as Eastside Church, invite you to enjoy today's program as we dig deeper into what it means to be still growing in grace. All righty, good morning, everyone. It is great to be with you today. I'm excited about today because today is part 10 and the final part of our series on hell. Good morning, brother. Um, today's our final series on on untangling ourselves from, I would say, tentacles attached to hell that need to be revisited. Um, I've had folks say they don't believe in hell, and so it's a write-off. It doesn't even exist in the Bible. I've talked about it. We have those conversations in these 10 sessions. And uh, there's a bit of a learning curve. There's a bit of humility that uh, has come that needs to be visited because some of us can get dogmatic and not humble in our opinions about this particular topic. Um, if you're in full-on traditional hell, that the tradition, what I mean is, the last 100 years, uh, 200 years, um, then yeah, you'll be unteachable, likely, unless the Holy Spirit started tugging at your heart and saying, hey, my love is bigger than that doctrine. But what does that mean? Exactly. That's the fun part, that we get to explore, unlearn, tire kick, poke and prod, and suddenly some pieces will come loose that were never meant to be there. And then we discover a more gracious, amazing God as we dig into this topic. So uh, today's topic deals with uh, their blood will be on our hands and other fear-mongering type things that hinder us from becoming teachable on this topic. So I hope this wrap-up will be really encouraging for you and you're going to love the next series that we're doing right after this on at one mint atonement what does it mean how is that tied in by the way there's some dovetailing in this uh atonement uh concept uh, interacting with hell we actually talked about it in the series a little bit but now we're going to be dig- digging into it in a very big way you'll love it so we're again we're revisiting and looking for better hope filled perspectives on some serious topics that need revisiting so if the series has been an encouragement please let us know even consider supporting this because we're sharing showing this live on the gan network grace awakening network links are all below plus you'll also see a link below uh, to where you can watch all 10 of these it's the there's a playlist but there's also the still growing grace playlist um, but just read below and and participate with this uh, i think you'll enjoy it so let's get into this last episode that i think you're going to love and then we start a new one next time Until then, we will see you. I mean, not we'll see you. I'll be back after this. By the way, I'm watching live with you, so don't forget to comment. And uh, I'm I'm listening with you, just like you are now. So here we go. (laughs) Oh my goodness! Quick, get a sip. We're starting. Hey, Randy. (laughs) We're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Still Growing Grace to this crazy group of uh, folks that are just honestly still growing in grace. We haven't arrived. Um, Our hearts are open, teachable. And I think that's the most fun part with this group. So we're going to continue this discussion of hell. And last time we ended with the the threat of fear in evangelism, that kind of a thing. It made me think of one of our Christmas songs that goes, you better watch out. You better not cry. Because, you know, the Santa Claus is coming to town and he's watching you when you're sleeping. He's watching like this threat. There's more threats. And Christianity has done that with mission and with outreach with uh trying to grow the church but the ulterior motive is what numbers i don't know but if the love of god is the motivation and not hell take hell out of the equation for your programming and you realize wait there's so much freedom in sharing the love of god even to non-religious people that we don't need to convert anyone jesus is in charge of that the holy spirit's in charge of that not us and that was kind of how we ended last time but it was pretty cool where do you want to well, continue? I like, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say just real quick, a verse on the the blood being on the hands. Oh, I mean, yes. You know, I know we talked about that, but that, 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 you know, that's the Old Testament thing. And that's not, you know, I, I was thinking of Ephesians too, just on that point, you know, for by grace are we saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, lest anyone boast, mm. you know, it, it's, it's to the extent we're used or 
his light re refracts through us and hell and blesses someone. It's the Lord doing it. Like you just said, it's not yeah. us. So the blood's not on our hands. And the only blood we're dealing with is Jesus's blood. And, you know, I do, I, you know, I do believe there's something to the blood of the martyrs, but it's not, it's not, uh, but it's blood that cries out for redemption. It's blood that cries out, you know, their prayers, you know, their blood. I've, I've often felt like, you know, when the people who, who, who are martyrs, um, get power sort of like in star wars they get more power over everyone else and their prayers they're in the cloud of witnesses you know so they're crying out exhorting for all of us you know to 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 move into the things of the kingdom and into the kingdom of light and love so there's no blood it's just jesus's blood which is just pulsating and that's just the holy spirit pulsating within us and it's delivering his life energy oh, yeah you know there's no blood of blame goodness gracious but it's a threat and I, I've heard it. I've never used it. I, I don't know why, but um, I had a small group meeting this morning and we we're talking about the blood in our hands that if you don't evangelize, you don't tell people before they die, their blood will be on your hands. And I jokingly said, when, when, when does it go on our hands? Does it cross over into the next life? Do we carry that blood on our hands in heaven? Do we walk around like a shame thing? Look, see all the people you didn't win to the Lord. Like, is, is that what it means by blood in the hands? What, what kind of shame and fear can that possibly be? And then my buddy Brent jumps in because he reminded us of them handing Jesus over. He says his blood will be in our hands. No problem. All that blood will be on our shoulders. And it was. And was the forgiving blood of Christ. Mm. Right? It's like, what? That was a great reversal. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That was cool. Yeah. You know, I think I'll borrow uh, from uh, Peter Hyatt. So Peter was doing a, a sermon one time on the Great Commission. Go and tell the world. And I know I grew up in a, uh, in a uh, church culture where missions and missions conferences and you got to go tell the world the if we don't tell the world here's what's going to happen whether it's blood on our hands or they're going to spend eternity so it's up to us and so they're you know you got to surrender give your life best thing you could ever do all those kind of things the pressure so he was saying he was talking about this and uh he started his message and somebody came up and whispered something in his ear and he went, oh, oh, and he turns around and he zips his pants. And then he turns <laughs> back around. And the whole point, he was just as only he can do with a lot of good teaching uh, illustrations. He said, so God has placed the eternity of mankind into the hands of a man who can't remember to zip his pants. <laughs> that was kind of, how ridiculous is it that the eternity of people are placed in the hands of us, that we can't get out of our own way in most stuff. It and gives, so that, yeah. <laughs> you know, the blood on our hands, when I think we all understand it is finished, he did it. He did it. It's finished. It's done. Now let's just go help people become aware of the salvation that's already ours. And then, uh, if I may say, on the fear tied into this, um, I think we are, uh, you know, because of, as a pastor, but when we're teaching and training people, I think we set them up to stay into a life of immaturity when mm -hmm. it's based on fear. Yep. Because I think the whole fear based from the old covenant, even though we do find the grace of God mixed in, there was a lot of fear as blessings and cursings and all of that. But that was, Paul said, it's kind of like a schoolmaster bringing us, like a tutor bringing us to God's grace. And one of the things, if I, if I recall correctly, when, we, when it talks about adopting as sons, there is a particular age in which you become known as a son. You, you leave the hands of the tutor and you become uh, a son. Again, you've always been a son, but you step into that relationship. I think more than likely, it's when the prodigal son asked for his inheritance, mm. when he had reached that point. And yes, it's based on relationship, not the fear of the rules. And I think we set ourselves up for immaturity, immaturity and immature followers. When it, everything's based on, if I'm doing this right, do I earn his pleasure, favor, all of that, versus a maturing relationship. And I, mm. as a father, I know it's 
you you do when kids are small it's kind of like the only thing i can do to keep you from going out into the streets tell you you might get a a whooping if you do but i don't say that to my 21 year old hmm. and uh i think god has led us now into this place where we've been invited into this relationship and it's made known to us i mean it's always been there but of course now i think this has just been made aware for us and if we can remove the fear, I think fear keeps us trapped in an immature relationship and it's time to grow up. Keeps you dependent on those around you, not dependent on Christ. You know, a good metaphor for that is, is a mortgage. You know, you, you, somebody who more buys a house, it's not their house if it's mortgaged. Somebody else owns it. Mm-hmm. All right. And I think fear is a mortgage. And even serious? though you I can come, I, I, do, I, I do believe you can come to the Lord in fear. And and still and and you'll you'll hear things, but you got to pay that mortgage off. And you, we do that with wisdom as we grow out of hell. We we go through hell. We have to deal with it because there's something in our in our natures that call for vengeance. You know, we, it's it's easier to believe hell, really, when you think about it, because we're retaliatory in our right. thinking and in our emotions and everything else. But just and, and you know, they say. Uh, with Billy Graham, have you all ever heard that that statistic? Like six months later, they check on people who converted at Billy Graham. Um, they did a big study, and it ends up that ninety percent of them uh, weren't walking in church or weren't walking with the Lord. Didn't claim to have any that that it stuck because a lot of them were making forced and panicked and wrote conversions. And um, and I, I love Billy Graham, and 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 he didn't always preach hell. He preached other things as well. But I'm just I'm just saying that, you know, it's so oversimplified and, and I know there is simplicity in Christ, but 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 never with threats. There's never simplicity in threats. Threats make everything complicated. Yeah. Well, there's your picture you shared last time. The threat shotgun wedding, you know, say I love you like, oh, my goodness. It's the same thing. And it's almost like uh, we're teaching others a, a false way to have a relationship. Example, a teacher in a school. They force kids to lie all the time. And if you're a teacher, you're going, well, I do not. Well, maybe you don't, but most teachers have in the past have said, Mm -hmm. when two kids are fighting, say, I'm sorry, shake hands, lie to each other (laughs) so that my life's easier. The Uh kids aren't sorry for at all. And so, again, that's another category of, of, of conversation, but it's that forced narrative, the pressure on in the moment. And if you set up a, a neat system that will keep people in fear, and unfortunately, hell's part of that. And I think after these number of episodes, this is our 10th one, uh, I think it's pretty clear. Hell is not the motivator. Love is. And if you still believe that hell is a motivation, um, you either haven't been listening or you just don't want to explore another menu item or your restaurant's really small because you only have a few items on your menu. I was I was I was very close to a ministry that was that was very much a fear based ministry. Their evangelical program was <laughs> all about fear, fear of hell, basically. And um, and what I noticed over those years that I was there and involved was that no one they weren't holding on to anybody. There was always crowds that would come for these events, and no one ever came back. And and as I started to grow in the understanding God's goodness and the character of God, and so forth. I realized that, you know, that passage we spoke about that says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. Well, if you're not, if you come in through some other door other than his kindness, whether it's fear or some other emotional high, whatever it might be, if you've come in some other door other than his kindness, you're not going to stay. You're, you're, you're not going to stay. It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. He's going to draw us through his kindness. And, and I think those ministries that use fear or or whatever to draw people, if they make the mistake of not introducing people to his kindness, then they're not going to keep anybody. Amen. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to share. And I think this uh, ties in with the blood on the hands kind of thing, because uh, Richard, I think you referenced the, the great cloud of witnesses and, uh, Here's something that I really believe the Lord showed me this uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, I was uh, I was watching, um, I think it was America's Got Talent. 
uh, uh, just a video clip. And uh, I think it was a janitor who walked up there and he was fearful. He didn't have the look of somebody who could sing. And he was in his 50s. And all of a sudden he starts singing. And before he did, before he did, Simon, of all people, if you've ever watched that show, said, we're, we're all rooting for you. And so here, here's what I got. I got like, like Simon and the judges were all like, we're rooting for you. And I, I it was like, the Lord said, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are rooting for you. Mm-hmm. Fred, we're rooting for you. And then all of a sudden, the crowd start as he started with a very good voice. Surprisingly, the crowd within just a couple of notes, they're on their feet and they're cheering him on. And as I was watching that, I sensed the, the, the Holy Spirit say to me, there's a great cloud of witnesses watching you, Fred, but they're not condemning you. They're not disappointed. They're cheering you on. Wow. They're saying, Amen. yes, yes, we believe in you. And yes. And uh, what a beautiful moment just I Amen. had with the Lord in that little video as he used that to instruct me away from the fear of, uh, you know, one of the reasons I felt like I needed to, or another reason I needed to evangelize is because all these witnesses were watching and yeah. they're disappointed in you if you're not, you know, running. That There's race. the wagging finger again. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I was a freaked out when I was told there's creepy people watching every move we make. It's like, okay, there's nothing secret. And it's just, again, more fear, 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 fear. But when you have the Trinity cheering you on. Yeah, there's a way of drawing strength from that. There's a way to, I think there's a way, instead of there's all these eyes watching every move we make, there's this great cloud of witnesses that we that are cheering us on that we actually have access to that can strengthen us uh, through the spirit. He uh, just, the Holy spirit, I believe can connect us to this great cloud of witnesses that are just, they're just always cheering you on. So for me, the last few days, if I feel a little, you know, discouraged or down or something, there's just this, Hey, there's this whole crowd just cheering you on. Keep going, keep going. It's funny. how you know, go, ahead. Was, go ahead, Richard. Sorry. No, I was just saying, um, I've, uh, was in, um, uh, um, I've been praying Psalm 91 every day. I used to do it all the time for maybe 15 years and I started doing it again. But one of the great, um, uh, parts of it is you should tread upon the line and the Cobra, you know, and I know we, you know, there's aspects of taking that literally, but I felt like what I've seen in it is fear are lions and Cobras. Mm. And that when we walk in Psalm 91 protection with angels at our side, what we're really doing is is what we can walk and not be harmed by the 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 scorpion fears that try to bite us or the snake bites of fear that try to bite us, and uh, that you know there's a militancy in our thought life that really we need to we need to recognize fear. We don't need to be scared of fear, all right, because that's missing the point, isn't it? But we we need to be cognizant of it. That when when some some dread, you know, and fear's got lots of you know, bastard brothers and, you know, lousy sisters, you know, (laughs) different versions of it. You know, there's dread, there's panic, there's shame. All of these things are related to fear. That fear is the entrance way to the thing. And fear is what lets hell be a possibility. It's because when fear comes in, fear always distorts our thinking. It distorts our emotions. It distorts our perception, which is why there's a perception, a distorted perception of what hell is, where If we know the Father's heart, we know that it's going to be restorative. His wrath is restorative. And it's not wrath the way we know wrath. It's wrath that restores, reconciles, uh, rehabilitates. That's the Lord's heart for us. And there's no fear in that. And we keep flinching. We keep flinching. The Lord's going to smite me. The Lord's going to smite me. And then he keeps not smiting us. And he keeps loving us until that finally that spirit breaks. It's like the horse whisperer. I don't know if y'all ever saw that movie, but, you know, the horse had been traumatized. And they call a horse whisperer out there who just moves in a couple of steps at a time. And and then the, you know, the horse is, you know, scared starts to bolt, but he he gets as close as the horse will let it. And then, and then he gets closer and closer. And finally that horse faces that, you know, gets over, gets uh, healed from the trauma. And um, we we just fears, you know, I'm, I'm, the older I get, the more I see that fear is, is really the, the William James said, it's the worm at the, at the core of the apple, you know? And, um, and I think that that's a, uh, anything that that doesn't 
anything that resonates from fear is not of is not of the Lord. It, it's just not because love doesn't the love doesn't posture itself that way. And when we learn the love posture, you talk about te- de-stressing. You talk about de-stressing and de de everything. You know, uh, de pride, de everything. You know, to think that all that we're responsible for so much, we're really not responsible for anything. <laughs> you know, but we but other than just relationship. You know, and the more we relate to God, the better our lives are. And that's the simple truth of it. And fear is an is a it retards that. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it, that would be that would be some great teachings at some point. It's just how do we deal with how do we recognize fear? And, and then that we not over. We don't want to need to make it such a big thing, you know, but but we do need to deal with it, on, on, you know, on, on a spiritual level and recognize it, it, it because it can pollute our thoughts and distort our thoughts. I, I've, I've had so many things at work going on that I, I realized my thinking has been distorted. I have looked at things with dread and horror and things that aren't there. But because I, I, I've so anyway, I, I'm, I've just committed myself to this treading on these lines and cobras, you know, claiming the Lord's protection on that and, and knowing that he's with me and his peace does not need to leave me. And that I have I have the receptivity to keep his peace with me at all times. Yeah, and and one of the things that I think it's in, so vitally important for the message that we are presenting of the goodness of God, that God is light. This is the this is the message. It, this is the message. It's like he's saying, "Listen, this is the message." I mean, give me your ear. This is it. <laughs> uh, it couldn't be any clearer. So, uh, because fear has such a damaging uh, it is so damaging on our lives and our ability to live. So um, I'm watching, you know, sitting in here next to me is my, my dog laying here at my, my feet. And so I, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a dog man. So there is this gentleman, I don't know his name, but he actually, uh, when rescue dogs come in that have been abused, and sometimes it's absolutely crazy to see how these animals have been treated. The animals will go into this large kennel. I mean, it's large enough for a, a, a two or three humans to sit in there. But it will it will go ball up in the corner and not even face with its head down. And this guy comes in and he just sits in there. He doesn't do anything. He just sits. And then once in a while, he'll reach over and he'll pet. And if the dog pulls away, he pulls his hand back. He'll offer a treat. The dog doesn't want it. And then, again, it's a time lapse. Mm-hmm. But eventually this gentle loving nature overcomes the fear and brings that that pup back into starting to receive love i think the evil one has a has a grip on our world a grip of fear and the lord jesus has moved in not with the hellfire and brimstone but he's moved in in his gentle nature and he's sitting there in our darkness and pain waiting and wooing for us to come back. And I think that, again, that message is beautiful. It's just Amen. beautiful. And it's draw, it draws people. It's, and it's uh, why what we're doing uh, and what we're talking about is so important. Amen. That, wow. <laughs> That's what horse whispers do too, right? They yeah. um, deal with a horse. I remember telling or hearing a story from a, um, a cowboy talking about the things you do to train a horse that, to break it because it needs to submit and however it works. And he said, one of the th- worst things that a trainer will do uh, that they don't want to do is take the legs, you know, to tie the legs and force them. And I watched this happen once uh, to one horse where they took the legs and the screaming of this horse. I've never heard a horse shriek and it's flopping and crazy bouncing all over the place, sweating and making a big puddle of sweat because it was that much. It was that scared. But by the time it was exhausted, the cowboy, leaned up to its head, stayed with his head, whispered, just, I know it's horse whisper stuff, but he spoke gentleness to the tone so that horse would hear its voice and recognize a calm voice when it's stressed. He undid those ropes and it, it listened after that. It was weird. Like, I know it's a big change, but that's what the gentleness of Christ comes. I'm not talking about Christ ties us up to teach us a lesson. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, nor does he send us to hell to burn until we get it right. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? But I think it's more like a campfire. We sit at a campfire, which we, I'm a campfire guy. I love campfires. And we sit around, enjoy the flame. It has heat. It's nice sometimes. Marshmallows, whatever, hot dogs. Uh, it's enjoyable. It's not a thing to be feared. So I don't know. Well, that's a great that's a great thing, though, because you see that some people need hell. Some people can't conceive without some end time justice, without some end time. Re- and that's where their trauma has them. But yet that's why I'm saying even the Lord is even with that person. It, it, and, and, and though he's not affirming hell, nor is he taking it head on until that person is able is able to consider it. And that's that. And that's what we can do with 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 people. We can still recognize, you know, that 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 they still have fear triggers that may, that they haven't dealt with. And 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 you know, some people are ready for this. I think there's a willing, you know, a swelling tide right now of people that want to hear this message. But there are still a lot of them that don't yeah. want to hear it, yeah. that won't consider it because they believe that God is going. Be, he's a God of justice, and He is a God of justice. But they don't understand yet what justice is. But we can still, um, I mean, I, I want to be able to, to discern who's ready to hear this and who's not, you know, and, and maybe the ones who aren't, we, we can, you know, I'm not saying we don't engage them, but I'm just saying that uh, we need to recognize, like you said, that the Lord is the ultimate. He's a, he's a human whisperer, <laughs> you know, so he, <laughs> he's as close to us as we're willing to let him come. <laughs> I think there's a big fear for those that are having a hard time with this message because it's a huge thing to have to admit you were wrong. Yes. And then to be unstable as you explore a better way to understand God's love. So for, and and your, your paycheck may be attached to this. (laughs) It's, it's big. So, I, I have a hunch that the the more uh, in leadership you are in a church setting, the greater the threat is of this message because um, it'll cost you a lot to challenge it or to relearn. Uh, and you may have to find another place completely, but I, I know way too many people that have paid a high cost. And Fred, you have, you know, uh, I've, you've yeah. walked through it. Um, I've not had such a threat because I was teaching other stuff first and then I finally got to the hell part. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's crazy yeah i i thought everybody would love the message um but but again i i really i i was so excited to have discovered it that i thought everybody would be like hey well you know when when you hear this alternative understanding that the early church fathers taught mm-hmm. that you're going to be overjoyed and uh <laughs> I many pa- think- yeah no too many pastors have been um, gunned down, uh, drive-by shootings because of this message. They get excited about message of grace or hell or whatever topic you want, and their excitement, they lose the wisdom uh, of who they're speaking to. And that's why this con- these conversations we've had have been a big help, because there's a gentle way to talk through them without being bombastic, but also yeah. we're opening it up with an open hand that we haven't got all the answers. And we're not here to convince you of anything. Don't listen to us. Listen to the Holy Spirit in you because there's already been a prompt if something's true or not. So this is just a, a, we're giving people permission to explore this topic in a way they've never explored before. And that's the beauty of this. I love it. We are just about done. I got like 30 seconds. So um, Richard, what do you got to wrap us up with? Well, just Fred had asked the question, uh, what if we're wrong about this? Oh. Uh, the only thing I would say, if I'm wrong about this, I'm wrong about Jesus. Yeah. So, and I don't believe I'm wrong about Jesus. So I'll, I'll push all my chips on it. <laughs> I love okay. it. That's a good way to put it. Well, thank you. This was a great conversation and we'll see what happens for our next topic. But thank you everyone for joining us for this. I hope it's encouraging. Please let us know. Until next time. All righty. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, that was a delight to finish. In fact, that's probably one of my favorite ones because it wraps up um, good news in a great package. Um, we go into far more detail in the previous episode. So this is part 10 of 10, unpacking and finding a better hope-filled perspective on this topic we call hell. And so we deal with some pretty tough questions and we challenge some I would say really faulty concepts and extremely incomplete concepts. So, um, and we're still learning. That's what we were saying there at the end. Uh, We haven't got it all figured out, but I am hungry to learn more 
and go deeper and wider into the love of God. If it doesn't look like Jesus, it's not the love of God. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, if you uh, are enjoying this, uh, we are live tonight on the Grace Awakening Network. Links are below in the in the description. Again, consider uh, supporting us. Uh, sign up for something monthly or whatever, or a one-time donation. It, it costs to put this on. Uh, the good news is free, but it costs to uh, produce and uh, do all the other stuff we do. So we'd love for you to, you know, if you're encouraged by this, then respond and help us out. That'd be great. Um, even if it's only for a short time, who knows? Well, for now, you have a really great day. We'll see you next week. It's going to be a new topic on at one -ment, atonement. What is it? So we have some gentle entry and gentle introduction for the first two episodes of that. I think you're really going to like them and you're going to see how it really dovetails into this. It's almost like a continuation of the current conversation. So if you've been enjoying it, they're just going to get better and better. Until next time, have a fantastic week. Join me next time on Still Growing in Grace. Enjoy previous episodes by downloading our podcast at growingingrace.ca. If this show has been an encouragement to you, consider making a donation today. For our Canadian link, visit growingingrace.ca. And for our USA link, visit eschurch.com. Your donation will help us continue spreading really good news. Thank you again for tuning in to Still Growing in Grace.